Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is our Tricentis task called lesson 9. I have already posted total 8 lessons covering different topics. So I would suggest you guys to go through those 8 lessons before you watch this lesson 9. So in this session, I'm going to cover how can we run the automated test cases in the scratch book. So in my previous uh, eight sessions, I have covered the topics from the scratch like how can we install and activate trial version of the Tricentis task automation tool? How can you create uh, modules and futures? And also I have covered how can you create the test cases and test case structure? And how can you create the test steps? And also I covered what are the test step values and dynamic random values and also I covered uh, dynamic date expressions and random values and also I covered the topic like action modes like verify, buffer, waiting on and other action modes right so in this lesson in this lesson so as we covered most of the concepts of the Tricentis task automation so now in this session, we are going to see end to end test case automation and then how can we run the test case in scratch book. Stay tuned. Please subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon so that you can receive notifications when I whenever I publish more lessons on Tricentis Tosca. Okay, so what is our first agenda item? Uh, the first agenda item is buffer. So I have already covered this topic in my previous lesson, lesson 8. But uh, before I show uh, how to run automated test cases in Tasca scratch book, uh, it makes sense for me to cover some of the topics one more time so that you can easily understand uh, the end-to-end -end automation. Okay, so now what is buffer? So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you what is buffer. Okay, main objective is by end of this exercise, you will be able to set a buffer to save the information from your system under test. So whatever the application you are automating, right? So if you want to save some information from the that application within the Tosca, then you will be using buffer. So why is this important? Because the buffer allows you to temporarily store the information of your system under test application, right, in Tosca, which can be used later in the test case to verify the values or to identify the modules. Okay. Okay, what is our second agenda item? Our second agenda item is verify. So I have already covered this topic in detail. In my previous lesson lesson 8 please refer that lesson if you need more information okay so by end of this exercise you will be able to verify values generated in the system under test okay whatever the application you are testing so whatever the values generated as an output of your test case execution right so that can be verified okay so why is this important in automated testing it is important to check that the correct values are generated, right? So in your application, if you want to verify whether the values are correctly generated or not, so you will be using verify function in Tosca. Okay, so the main goal in this lesson, right? So when I when I'm going to basically show you the actual Tosca test run, so in this test case, we are going to verify that the shipping costs according to your order are calculated correctly. So I'm going to basically verify whether the shipping cost is correctly calculated or not. Right. So that's why we'll be using verify action mode here to verify the values of your system under test application. Okay. Our next agenda item is verify calculated value. Okay. So I'm going to show you the exercise basically uh, by automating the actual application and how can we run right so by end of that exercise you will be able to verify a value in the system under test using a buffer and 
verify the appearance of an object in response to an action in the system under test. Why is this important? In order to verify the subtotal. So in the sh shopping cart, right? When you are checking out the uh, blue jeans, so you will have a subtotal, right? So in order to verify the subtotal, the previously saved buffer must be used along with the calculations using a, an on-screen message. Okay, so these steps allow the test case to meet all the verification requirements. Okay, so I'm going to show you practically by walk through the Tosca application and by walk, walk through the actual system under test application, whatever we are going to test. Okay, so then you will be understanding what is this verified calculated values. Our final agenda item is how can I run the automated test cases in the scratch book and how can I analyze the results okay so in my previous lessons I already showed you how can we create uh, test cases in uh, Tosca and then how can we automate the test steps and test step values in Tosca okay so now I'm gonna show you how can we basically run these automated test cases in scratch book okay along with the concepts of verify and buffer and then we'll be running the script in the scratch book okay so then we are going to analyze the results okay so now let me go through the actual tosca application and show you how can we perform this entire exercise okay so so this is my tosca tool automation tool okay so in uh, lesson lesson eight I have already showed you basically the basic flow of our entire application, correct? Basically what we are automating. So basically uh, what we are doing here is, uh, this is our uh, demo web shop. This is one website which we are using to automate the application, right? So what we are doing, we are just uh, logging in. And then once you click on login, I'm selecting username and then I'm entering my password, right? So once you enter the password, I'm going to select apparels and shoes and then I'm going to add this blue jeans into the cart right and then I have to go to shopping cart and then I need to enter the quantity right let's say I want to enter 25 blue jeans and then click on I agree and then check out so once you do the checkout process right and then click on continue and then we, we are going to basically uh, select uh, the shipping method, shipping address and then click on continue and then I'm going to provide the credit card details and basically what we are doing here is I would like to verify the price of my blue jeans. Okay, so let's assume I ordered 25 blue jeans. Then the total price whatever I got, right? So is it correct or not? I would like to verify. And then also what is the subtotal so th whether the subtotal is correctly calculated or not and then if the shipping method is ground and then it should charge me only ten dollars so i need to verify this also whether the ten dollars has been charged or is it wrong is it correct right i would like to verify that also as part of my automated testing and then what is my total whether the total amount whatever uh, that has been charged to my credit card is this correct or not right so i would like to even verify that by using tosca automation and then once you click on confirm i would like to verify this confirm message also whether i received a, your order has been successfully processed that message or not right so this is entire entire this end to end uh, business series scenario of order right business this is one business scenario right so this entire business scenario i would like to automate by using Tasca. So, so earlier I already covered entire this process of adding uh, blue jeans to the cart and checking out and then also how can we add the payment method and I covered even uh, the uh, random expressions, how can we uh, uh, use the random expressions etc. Right? All these concepts I already covered. So please go through uh, the previous lessons be before we really look into this session. Okay? So now, in this session, let me uh, let me copy lesson ten. Okay, copy 
and then paste this lesson 10 again here. So once you paste it, I would like to name this as lesson 09, okay, because this is our uh, lesson 09, okay. And now, so I would like to go to my order product, okay. So here, order blue jeans, okay. So here, what I would like to do is, whenever I order a blue jeans, right, I would like to, let me show you here. So when I add a blue jeans into the cart, okay, whenever I add a blue jeans into the cart, I would like to add this price. See, basically what is the price of my blue jeans, which is $1. I would like to add this price to a buffer value so that I can use this price value in later steps. Okay. So in this step, what I'm going to do, I would like to add this into buffer and here what i want to add i would like to add this static inner text okay i would like to add this static inner text called price into a buffer so let me name this as blue price blue jeans okay price blue jeans okay so what is the inner text of this uh, basically what is the inner text this this is the price i'm capturing the inner text of this right so now so once i capture the inner text of this particular price what i'm doing i'm making the action mode as buffer that means it's going to store the inner text of this object into price blue jeans variable okay and now let me go to verify the price okay so once i order the once i order the price blue jeans i would like to verify the entire order right basically what is my subtotal and what is my so let me just show you again okay check out so let's go here continue what is my uh, shipping method is ground and let's select cash on delivery only okay okay so here i would like to verify my uh, subtotal what is my subtotal what is my ground uh, price and what is my total right so for that what i'm doing i have selected column 2 okay so how do we basically web tables how can how can we add uh, handle html web tables i already covered in lesson 8 it is very important for you guys to uh, go through the lesson 8 okay so here so if you see in the web table okay what web table i'm talking about here the this entire this entire values these entire values are stored in a web table okay at the back end html web table okay so now i would like to select shipping here okay what is my ship, shipping cost first of all i would like to verify the shipping cost what is my shipping shipping cost my shipping cost should be $10 because I am selecting a method of ground. Okay. So that's why I would like to verify whether my shipping cost is actually $10 or not. Okay. I mentioned that. Okay. And you have to select the action mode as verify. What about and again subtotal. Now I would like to verify the subtotal. How? Let me tell you. Okay. So here you have to select a uh, action mode as verify and now so let me just i already stored value okay so what is my subtotal let me tell you okay so here i am using the math function okay i already explained this math function in my previous video okay what i am doing here so price blue jeans whatever we stored in my previous step right so here i have stored the price right so now what i am doing i am multiplying I am actually using that, I am calling that buffer variable which is price blue jeans which I stored earlier as a buffer under variable called price blue jeans and then what I am doing, I am multiplying that price with 25 because I am going to order 25 blue jeans, right? So that means my subtotal should be quantity of the blue jeans multiplied by the price of each blue jeans, okay? So that's why I would like to verify 
the subtotal and now I am verifying the subtotal now I would like to store whatever the subtotal that is displayed here as it is see what is my subtotal so this is my subtotal if I order one blue jeans okay so now I would like to store that in one buffer variable okay how so that's why here you have to select that particular value okay and now name this as subtotal okay I have named that as subtotal now what is my action mode my action mode is buffer that means I would like to store the value of subtotal done now here now I would like to verify the price total price what is my total price my total price is so let me tell you my, my total price is whatever the value I stored that means subtotal subtotal plus my ten dollars that means shipping cost subtotal plus shipping cost right so let me add that formula here okay so here what I'm gonna do this time I would like to select total right total price I would like to verify so here I'm gonna what I'm doing I am multiplying sub sorry I am adding subtotal whatever I have stored as a buffer with my shipping cost so that is my total okay so now what is action mode you have to put as verify done so here what I am doing I am first validating my shipping cost as 10 or not and then I am also validating subtotal by multiplying the quantity of the jeans with the price of the jeans and now the actual subtotal water I'm getting from the application I am storing that in one buffer called subtotal and then I am verifying the total by adding subtotal whatever I stored here okay so subtotal might be changed might get changed right subtotal might change if I uh, order 50 then subtotal might be different so now whatever the subtotal I receive here I am storing in a buffer called subtotal and then I am calling that buffer here and then adding that to $10 so how to use math function along with the buffer I have already explained you in my previous session please refer that okay so now I have added that subtotal and then so once that is done let me go to confirmation page okay so what happens here in the confirmation so not this one sorry verification process let me go to verify order success so in the verify order success so I would like to verify whether I receive this verify message or not right so what I need to do to verify this successful message so what I am doing I am actually capturing that object property basically I have added that object from the module okay and then now I would like to enable this as true that means I am verifying whether this message has been appeared or not okay and then here select the action mode as verify so what I'm doing I'm verifying whether this message order successful appeared on the screen or not okay so that is it so now we have completed entire end-to-end -end flow what we completed here let me show you again first what I am doing as part of precondition I am opening URL and then I am navigating to login page and then I am entering my email ID password and login and then under order product I am navigating to uh, apparels and shoes and then I am clicking on blue jeans and then what I am doing I am storing a price of the blue jeans into a buffer called price blue jeans and then I am entering the quantity of 25 
and then I'm clicking on add cart button right and then I'm starting the checkout process okay as part of checkout process I'm doing I'm clicking on shopping cart I'll go to the shopping cart and then I'll start the checkout process by accepting the I'm checking the box terms of service and then click on checkout and then here in the checkout process what I'm doing I'm entering I'm clicking on continue and then I'm clicking on shipping address and then I'm selecting the shipping method as ground and then click on continue and then I'm selecting the payments method as credit card and click on continue and then I'm providing my visa details and everything and then I'm verifying the price so whatever just now I explained right so as soon as you click on continue it's going to show you all your totals like uh, what is your shipping cost subtotals I'm verifying all these and then click on confirm once I click on confirm I'm gonna get the confirmation message I'm verifying that confirmation message okay so now if I run this entire automated test case basically we have completed automating this entire test case end-to-end -end test case right now I would like to run this entire test case in a scratch book how you just need to right click and then click on run in scratch book okay so let me show you how can we run this okay let me show you how you see I mean basically how this task runs this entire test case okay in scratch book click on run in scratch book so immediately it opens an IE browser okay and then see it is clicking on login entered password and everything it is clicking on blue jeans it's very fast right so and then it went to cart and then it is giving billing address shipping address selected ground as shipping method and then it's going to select payment method as credit card and then it's going to give you all the credit card details very fast okay now it is verifying the price here and then again it is verifying the successful message here okay let's see there is something happen what happened so this is your scratch book results so if you see the whatever the green color appearing on the screen that means this login step is success and this navigation to appearance success all these steps test steps are successful all these test steps are successful but if you see verify order success something is went wrong okay container has no default property to read from okay so basically let me see the verification of the prices this is very important for us right so what we did here if you see first what we verified we have verified the sh shipping cost as ten dollars let's see what happened so if you see expected value is ten dollars and because I entered shipping cost as ten dollars right and then I asked to verify with the application value so application value also showed me ten dollars that means my shipping cost is correct what about subtotal my subtotal is what I am doing here my expected value is 25 correct and my actual value also 25 so this is my subtotal verification how did we do we have entered a math math function correct so basically the price of the blue jeans and the quantity and here what I did I have stored this entire subtotal into a buffer called subtotal and then I'm verifying the total price how so if you see here my expected total price is $35 and my actual also $35 how did I verify it? subtotal is $25 plus my shipping cost is $10 which is $35 so that means whatever the total amount that has been charged by the shopping cart shopping site is correct okay and if you see all these green color steps are pass with a check mark if you see here green color with a right mark right so all these steps are passed and then if anything is failed then it's going to show you this particular basically red color or as a warning okay so this is how you can basically 
verify each and every step and you can verify the results in a scratch book okay running in scratch book and final run is totally different scratch book run means you are actually trying to debug so if it is not working then what should i do okay so every time we use the scratch book okay so because so now my test is passed so my entire test consider my entire test is passed and now i would like to change the work state basically my entire work state of this particular test case should be changed from planned to completed that means i have completed automating this test case because my test results are as expected so that's why i marked i marked this work state of this test case as completed okay so our entire automation of entire business scenario has been completed okay hope you all understand the concept please do subscribe to the channel click on bell icon so that you will receive more notifications whenever i publish more videos so i'm going to publish more and more videos lesson 10 12 11 12 13 14 so i'm going to publish lot of videos i'm going to cover different topics okay stay tuned thank you